It struck me earlier on, Marty, actually, thinking about Fermanagh. It's a long time since Tipperary gave them a walk over in the qualifiers. And I wonder how Tip think this morning uh, or this afternoon when they look out in Crow Park and see the strides and the journey that Fermanagh have made. Uh, impossible, really, for me to give them a, a big shout today. They're really up against, uh, I suppose, the fine, one of the finest teams uh, in the country. Short odds for the All-Ireland. Uh, they're going to have to produce a magnificent performance to even stay in this game. Match referee is John Bannon from Longford. He started refereeing in 1992. He took charge of the All-Ireland final of 1998 and the meeting of Armagh and Kerry in 2002. Well, all the experts say it has to be Armagh. But let me just uh, say a quiet word for the underdog. They've beaten Meath, they've beaten Cork, they've beaten Donegal. Can Fermanagh add the, the biggest scalp of all on their journey this summer? The big boys from Ulster, Armagh. It's a and very, very blustery breeze. Sorry, Kevin. It's a very, very blustery breeze. And uh, Fermanagh, I think wisely, Kevin, took advantage of the toss when they won it and are playing from right to left. With yeah, advantage. because they're going, to need a good, they're going to need a good start. And of course, Marty, when you make reference to their journey through the qualifiers and, and you listed the teams they have beaten, you know, I suppose, I don't think it's unfair of us. I think we're being realistic about what they're up against today. But you have to say there are three massive scalps that Fermanagh have, uh, have taken out in the qualifiers. And it has to give them confidence. As you say, they're a very young team. <laughs> you know, miners are hardly shaving half them. And uh, these fellas are going to just get stuck into it. I'm sure if the player would abandon, they can ask a few questions. Can they ask the big questions? Don't think so. Well, I was up in uh, Fermanagh doing a report indeed for the Sunday game, and uh, I thought really Donegal were so big physically that uh, Fermanagh wouldn't be able to win. They're up against a bigger physical side today. It's a big test for the youngsters from Fermanagh. The first of the quarterfinals underway. First touch for Niall Tinney from Urbanstown. And if Fermanagh are to have any uh, chance, realistic chance, they have to open it up. And I will uh, emphasise to you the amount of support play that Fermanagh indulge in. Uh, usually they have two or three players available when one of their players win possession. It's the only way they're going to beat Armagh. They're relishing the challenge, facing Enda McNulty and the boys, as Aidan O'Rourke from Drummond T takes the first sideline ball of the afternoon. Aiming at Dermot Marsden. Laying it off to John Till, who we mentioned in our scene set, uh, took the place of Oshin McConville. This is two against two, good understanding. Goes back for as Ryan McCluskey from Enniskill and Gales. Cross field. Fermanagh taking advantage of the wind, but th this is their style of play, whether it is with the wind or against the breeze. Pass going astray from Mark Little. Over for as Dermot Marsden. First score on the way, perhaps. Dermot Marsden the score. Four of a goal and three so far in the championship. And certainly the long ball uh, played advantage there for uh, Armagh. Good score by Marsden. Yeah, terrible, terrible clearance from the Fermanagh defence there. Straight down the throat of Kerry McGinney. He found Marsden very easily, but it's a lovely strike by Marsden to get him off. Marsden, a uh, very confident player, uh, season 2004, and he's making a big contribution for Armagh. Great start for him. Ever since he was introduced as a substitute against Cavan, when he scored a point, he's been more or less uh, first choice again in the full forward line. Three Fermanagh players going up. This is the captain of Fermanagh, Shane McDermott from the St. Patrick's Club. Laying it off for Stephen Maguire into the space. This time, however, Ender McNulty read the situation well. Here, McGinney makes himself available. Crossfield ball, the wind. Just carrying it away, but it works out all right from a Armagh um, point of view. Paddy McKeever, Aidan O'Rourke, long ball again inside. Barry Owens, one of just four players playing for Fermanagh this afternoon that played in the quarterfinal last year. It's an amazing statistic when you consider it. Just four players, Owens, Shane McDermott, Marty McGrath and Stephen Maguire. This is Paddy McKeever. Scored a cracking goal in the Ulster final at this very venue. Good ball inside for Stephen McDonald, loses the fist and sends it over the bar. Well, there's an earlier uh, part of the play there with the Fermanagh number 12, Mark Little, was certainly fouled out here. John Bannon missed it, it ended up the other end of the field. And here's the man we've been talking about earlier on. This is a superb finish with his fist. Saw the, had a look, was rented on. No, I'll take my point. This was a man that impressed so much for the uh, international team when they played Australia, both in uh, Melbourne and in Perth last October. 
as Niall Tinney from Irvinstown takes the uh, kick out. Paddy McKeever. A physical presence that Armagh have all over the pitch. Being quite evident in the early stages. This is Ronan Clark from the fierce old club in Armagh City. Back outside for Paul McGrain. The pass is not a good one. Nicely picked up by Tony McEntee. Armagh putting the pressure on immediately. Fermana chasing shadows. This is for Stephen McDonald with the right foot. The umpires say it's another point. He scored two points against Tony Gold the last time here on the 11th of July. He scored two points again here this afternoon, and we've just uh, almost four minutes played. It is another beauty, and what's ominous now really for Fermanagh is there's been two or three 50-50 balls out in the middle of the field, the centre-half back position. Armagh have come up each time with that ball and moved it on. I know McDonald is on his second point, and uh, that doesn't look good for Fermanagh. I actually noticed, uh, Kevin, the day I was above in uh, Clonus when Fermanagh played Tony Gold. Fermanagh were very slow to settle. It took them a while to get their rhythm. Yeah. About 15 minutes gone. Well, it's, we'll see what happens. Ian McBaron losing his uh, footing there. John Toll. <laughs> I can see by that, Kevin, you're not convinced by argument. Anyway, let's continue on. Kieran Beghini giving it a oh, lovely catch by Ronan Clark. Barry Owens came in with a challenge that was an illegal run. Well, this is, uh, I mean, definitely not the start they wanted, Marty. I mean, they're looking look for 4-0 here. You'd have to uh, suspect that they're going to uh, capitalise with this one. It's a handy one straight in front of goal, 20, 23, 4 metres out. Well, he scored twice already from play. This could be his first from a free. Goal in nine points so far in the championship. Well, the goal in 11 now. And this one should be a relatively easy one. And even without Oshin McConville, Armagh have a backup man for every position, for every job, it would appear. And he just chips this over so casually. Four uh, points to no score. It's nearly a point a minute, Marty, and that is not good, you know. Four out of four. No, that's a serious stat. information. Yep. Armagh thinking uh, of warming up at least their substitutes at the moment. Shane Gone is one of those players, as... Uh, now Tinney uh, takes this kick out. He's actually not first choice goalkeeper for his club, would you believe? He actually plays midfield. And the first choice goalkeeper for Irvinstown is the sub goalkeeper. And if you can make sense of that, well, then you've uh, certainly my, one of my uh, puzzles for the afternoon solved. For Manor's first real attack. Easy ball for Paul Hirty. And the McNulty now plays his club football here in the capital with Valley Bowden. Nice interplay. Right half back is Kieran Hughes. Surprisingly selected for the Ulster final. And certainly merited his opportunity. Paddy McKeever here. This is uh, Hughes going back into a forward position. McKeever takes the return. Tries to uh, sneak the ball through. Picked up by Tony McEntee. Four for Manor players chasing after. But McEntee foul possession according to John Bannon. And it's going to be a free out for, for Manor. It's going, to, it's going to feel very hard done by there. I mean, Tony McAtee couldn't have done a whole lot more. He tries to break the tackle and throw it out. But free goes against him. Now, here come Fermanagh. They're playing one man up in the full forward line. Here's Paul Hirty. Fine fielding. And lays it off to Kieran McGinney. Confident play by the goalkeeper. But surprisingly, McGinney kicks it over the sideline, far sides. There's a man who won three All-Ireland Club medals with Chris McGlenn. I actually thought he'd overstretched himself there when the breeze mm -hmm. took it and put a little bit more uh, distance and height on it. And uh, Paul Herty, he was, uh, you know, just hanging around the 13-metre line for a second. I thought he'd over, he'd overrun it, but he made a great catch. This is uh, Marty McGrath from St. Joseph's Club in Edirne, Queen's University student. And as Kevin mentioned in the scene set there in the player profile, uh, it was actually Mayo manager John Mohan who brought him in uh, all of three years ago. He's been uh, scoring well. Here's Charlie Mulgrew, took over uh, the Fermanagh team in January. Made a bit of a reputation for himself in Donegal in charge of St. Unions of Letterkenny. Did well with them. And now makes the journey to uh, Irvinstown and Enniskillen to train these young players. Support play, evident again. Shane McDermott has to try and lead the way. 
correct decision here by the referee. There's some jersey pulling, going to be a free for uh, for Mana. Third free. Yeah, no question about that. They're trying to break the tackle, which is very interesting. They're giving short pops in, in, in an attempt to break down the, the screen that Armagh have in front of them. And they're attempting to break it that way, but you can see once he attempted to get away, Armagh just closed in him. Did, don't mind coughing up the free mark there, Marty. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's 55 metres out. That's not going to pressurise them. Stephen McDonald seems to have picked up an injury here. A facial injury, a little bit of a cut there on the side of the face. Let's see what happened uh, here. There was an elbow there, just an accidental knock. But so Stephen goes back in, corner forward. The other Stephen Maguire takes the free. Floating this one in. Colin Bradley looking around. The support is there again. In the shape of Peter Sherry. Comes back and this is going over the crossbar. Carmana have registered their first score in this quarterfinal. And a huge number of Fermanagh supporters rejoice. The ball was well blocked down. Comes back to Colin Bradley from Enniskill and Gales. And slots it over. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good uh, a good point for Armagh to get. Excellent score. Kieran Hughes pumping it in high and very long. Goalkeepers off his line. Comes back to McDonald. Good defending by Fermanagh, but momentarily there was a chance of a goal. Well, this is where they're so dangerous. I mean, this is a, a tremendous kick right into the danger area. Up goes Ronan Clark with a little flick. Back to McDonough. McDonough brings that down quick, Marty. That's a great goal chance, but he really does very well. Controls the ball and lifts it over the bar. They're so dangerous on that high ball because they contest everything in around the box. Well, the beauty of our Mar, really, Kevin, is the fact that they can play it either way. Short, long, high, low. They have uh, a choice on the menu. Yeah, the quality of the, of the kick in from right half back. I, I think it was Kieran Hughes that lurried it in. It was a massive bent of a ball, maybe 60 metres long. Well, this 19 year old from Irvinstone didn't even play in the National Football League. Niall Tinney tries to send it over to this side, gathered by Kieran O'Reilly, who's adopting a very deep role. So too is James Sherry, the full forward. Marty McGrath looks at options, tries to give it to his midfield partner, slips through. Coming forward from right half back is Raymond Johnson from Newton Butler, sending it in to Stephen McGuire, who's now operating on Fancy Bellew at full forward as Fermanagh redesign their forward line. And Stephen McGuire, if you haven't seen him before, I can assure you this is oh, a very a good, good footballer. He certainly is. I've seen him a few times this season. <laughs> Fancy Bellew was not a happy camper. He thought he was doing okay in the tackle sticks, but he did seem to be pulling him in towards him. John Bannon was in on it like a shot, and he's given a very good chance now here to Stephen McGuire to pop this one over. Scored 18 points so far in the championship campaign. Stephen Maguire sends it over. Three points between the teams. 11 and a half minutes played. And it's a good game, Marty. It's settled down well. It's quite lively, very open. Uh, lots of good attacking football from both sides. And of course, the usual things we associate are Mac. Good defending, blocking and hurrying for the ball. And uh, our Fermanagh are well settled now, so we could be in for a very decent game of football. Fine catch by Paul McGrath. Giving an inside for his Dermot Marsden. With him is Niall Bold from Canole. Marsden from Clonagale. Paddy McKeever. Valley Hagen. Lovely little village in the county of Armagh. Back to McDonald. This is a high ball. And it's uh, not quite reaching the end line. It has now. And that uh, is Armagh's first wide of the afternoon after 12 and a half minutes of play. And one other thing that we could uh, talk about, Kevin, is the fact that both of these teams, particularly for Manor, like to play a short passing game. So actually playing against the breeze is not as big an obstacle. No, and, and there certainly is a breeze down there. Even though if you look at the sideline flags, it wouldn't indicate a whole lot. But we did see the uh, Artean boys bandera, and those flags were fairly fairly uh, flying in the in the breeze. They have what advantage, and it's a very good point you make. The uh, playing as the breeze won't, won't phase them. This is right half-back Raymond Johnson. half blocked. Comes back to Dermot Marsden. Plenty of Fermanagh's defenders there. And away comes Shane McDermott. 
laying it off for uh, Raylan Johnson. This is Liam McFarren. This is club football with Kilmercut Crooks here in Stillorgan in Dublin. Crossfield ball from Colin Bradley. End over for Eamon Maguire. Scored a cracking goal against Donegal. Line turn at the far side indicates that it's going to be a sideline ball to Armagh. Andy Mallon. He had backfires Paul Hearty. Available this side is uh, Ender McNulty. He was calling for it, but uh, it works out okay. Straight down the middle. Added to it by Marsden. For Mana. Coming to grips slowly. Beginning to play with a little bit more confidence, perhaps. That ball easily intercepted by Tony McEntee, and they could be in trouble here. Paddy McKeever to his right is Stephen McDonald. McKeever goes left. And it's a terrible option. And for Mana, gain a bit of confidence from this. Niall Bold from Kinali, student in Queen's University in Belfast. Leaving it in quickly. Intercepted, however, by Ender McNulty. Aidan O'Rourke is brought down by corner forward Kieran O'Reilly. And this is going to be our mass second free. I can tell you, Stephen McDonald was raging with Paddy McKeever there when he earned that last solo run. He got really free, should have got the ball. Should have. Aidan O'Rourke takes too many steps. And this is going to be a free far from Anna. Just interesting statistics for you as well, because uh, when you see this uh, battle ensuing, people think, uh, well, this is going to be easy for Armagh. When they met in 2002, Armagh scored 16 points to Fermanagh's 1-5. There was only a point between them in 2000. This is Stephen Maguire. Referee says Francie was fouling. It's a free in for Fermanagh. Stephen Maguire has given Francie Bellion plenty of it. He's uh, working very hard, and yeah, that's a foul. There's no question about that. Uh, the one point I'd make, Marty, from looking at it in overall context is, I just, you know, after the electric start that Armagh had, mm. I just see them getting a bit casual. They're not mm. contesting the ball, you know, as I would uh, expect an Armagh team to do. And I'm just wondering if they're taking their foot off the gas a small bit. Here's Stephen Maguire. An important kick for his county. And it's his second free. 15 minutes, almost 16 minutes played. Now just two points between the teams. And that'll do his confidence a lot of good because that was a tricky free. Uh, you know, off the ground, they're difficult. Taking them out of their hands, they're extremely difficult from that angle. Judge the breeze, lovely. And that will bring uh, his confidence on a ton. Steve McGuire doing very well so far. Kick out by Paul Hearty. Breaking ball, nipping in is Mark Little. Laying it off as Martin McGrath, McBarrett. And Fermana have settled. Eamon Maguire. Confident from St. Patrick's Club to take on none other than Aidan O'Rourke. Still Maguire. Referee blows his whistle. And maybe there's a little sequence of play, Kevin. Maybe there's something for us to learn. Maybe just perhaps if Fermana continue to run at this Armagh defence, but really Armagh defensively don't particularly like it. But you see, the point here is when you have a referee, John Manor is, is one of the best referees we have uh, on the scene at the moment. In that last sequence of play, he was fouled about three times. In fact, he got the free on the third foul because they're not only putting in their hand, they're jersey pulling. Here's Maguire again. Oh. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> it's his third three. And now, just one point between the teams. <laughs> Marty, that wasn't kicked over, it fell over. Well, if you're from Fermanagh, I think uh, you had a bit of a mild heart attack there because it seemed to be drifting to the right. Paul Hearty ups to send it over towards the Cusick stand. Jeremy Bysden can't keep it in. Or rather, it's John Toll, actually. That's going to be a sideline ball for Fermanagh. This is Shane McDermott. Nipping in is Tony McIntyre. Coming forward, Andy Mallon. Back to McIntyre. Kieran McGinney. Good play by Armagh. Paul McGrain. Mark Little is back there. This is Paddy McKeever. 
Ronan Clark, who has options available. Ronan Clark was fouled for man hour incensed. But I don't really think they're right. I think the uh, referee was correct. Yeah, they can be as, as incensed as they want to. In fact, uh, like the previous little one, there was two fouls in this again because this tackle with the boot, that's a free in for sure. You see it coming there. And look, there's the jersey pull and two guys falling down on top of him. That's lazy tackling. And that's the sort of stuff for man just can't afford against a team with disability. Stephen McDonald has scored four times. Once from a free. More or less dead straight in front of the post. Picks it over. There's fifth point. And his free taking should at least please one of our analysts today, Martin Carney. He likes to see the ball on the ground when a free has been taken. And let me tell you, he's dead right. That's the only way to take them. The other ones are fine when you're up four or five points, taking it out of the hand, and life is good. But when it gets tight and when you start sweating and choking a bit, it's always better to have it on the floor. Punched on. Liam McBarron stays opening up for big full forward James Sherry. Options available. Decides to go for a score, and the white flag will be raised. Ross Lays, James Sherry gets his first point in this quarterfinal. 19 year old physio physiotherapy student in UCD here in Dublin, going forward and scoring his first point in this quarterfinal. Yeah, and you might recall he came up with a lovely medley of scores in the court match as well. James Sherry knows where the post is, and it was crucial when they got the open space that he actually executed and got that score. Mark Little playing a deep extra half-back uh, role. Marty McGrath was fouled previously, and uh, this is going to be a free for Fermanagh. They're eight free of the first half. I think he's going to book, uh, well, he's certainly ticking uh, the Armand over nine, Paul McGrain, tackling with the fist, is what he indicated. Fermanagh once more, without a boost. Laying it off, Colin Bradley. The support provided by Peter Sherring. It's a terrible pass. Really no option at all available there, and very quickly, Armagh counter-attack. Two Armagh players collide. Inside is Kieran O'Reilly. Mark Little, oh, Francie arrived. And the block down is superb. And out for a 45. Yeah, Francie needed to arrive, and he did, Marty, as you... Uh, it was excellent, well-timed, this is a perfect hit. It's a goal chance, you see, if, if Franzi doesn't cover. Shoulder to shoulder, bang, and the ball spills out of him. And a good block for ending up at a 45. First 45 of the uh, afternoon for Arma, or for, uh, for Mana. And this is going to be taken by Colm Bradley as we look at Francie Bellew. Who, of course, won three All-Ireland. Let's look at the statistics here. 51% to Armagh, 49 for Fermanagh. It wasn't like that in the first five minutes, but now you can see statistical information changing as Fermanagh get a grip. Yeah, sometimes I, I look at those statistical uh, charts and you say, God, that couldn't be, but actually it's that's true. one I would agree with. Yeah. Fermanagh actually do appear to have an awful lot of the ball and uh, they're well, well in this game. You know, one point down. If Bradley was to put this one over the bar, we would draw a match. Fancy Bellium. One of the few players that I know has a, his own website, a fan site. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't visited, and uh, maybe this is the reason why. It's hard shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder <laughs> football by brave Francie Bellew from Cross Maglen. Would you let your children get on that website? <laughs> Great-hearted player, and Joe Kernan in particular is uh, very fond of uh, Francie Bellew. Saw him as a 10-year-old and graduate right here to the... Uh, Biggest venue of them all here at Cook Park. Colin Bradley. This one dropping it. in, and it's over the bar. Well, well. Armagh. And for Mana. Level for the first time. And as always, we're doing the Bank of Ireland RT Man of the Match competition. You pick uh, the player that you think will win the awards, that's the number, 1515 717181. And if it coincides, Northern Ireland, 0901 0630 117. So uh, start uh, making your choices, says Armagh with Ronan Clark, lays it back. Well gathered by Paul McGrain. 
Well robbed by James Sherry. And the crowd now in Croke Park. Neutrals and indeed a large contingent from Fermanagh getting behind the teenage sensations from Fermanagh. Playing nice football, Eamon Maguire surrounded by four Armagh players. It squeezes out for his left half forward Mark Little. This is Little. Available is McBarrett. Back it comes to Shane McDermott, lending assistance to his attack. Referee says his jersey, his arm was being held, and this is going to be a free for Fermanagh. Marty, I can definitely say that John Bannon is refereeing this in a manner that a lot of teams have been saying is only right in fear that he's really getting tied in on the tackling. He's watching for people that are pulling jerseys and holding hands, and you have to say he's doing a fine job of it. And uh, from Manor bringing in Tom Brewster for Kieran O'Reilly. And Tom Brewster from Enniskillen. Came on for Lee McBarron against Donegal and he came on against Cork as well and scored a great point. A young player that just returned from Australia. This is Colin Brandley. Scored already from this distance. This one, however, is tailing to the left. First wide of the game for Fermanagh. It's actually amazing, uh, you know, we've had uh, 25 minutes of football, good attacking football, and only mm -hmm. one wide each uh, for Armagh and Fermanagh. Well, somebody said that uh, they were expecting this to be a game that we'd have to bring our flask of tea and sandwiches and have a chat about everything, but uh, certainly this is turning out to be a most entertaining game of football. And from Mana are putting it up to the Ulster Kingpins. Good reading of the game by Shane McDermott. The captain leading by example, laying it off far as Peter Sherry to James Sherry, his brother, Liam McBarron. Dropping this one in. Gathered by Mark Little. Paddy McKeever fouls him, and this is going to be a free dead straight in front of the bus. And you'd have to say at this stage, to be fair, the long ball strategy is working for Fermanagh. It's causing problems. The Armagh defence in there deep seem to have a problem. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, the point, uh, oh, I agree absolutely, Marty. There's no question about that because they're getting a hand in it and looking for the breaks. But Armagh just are off the zip at the moment. There's no question about that. Almost 26 minutes play. Is this going to put Fermanagh in front for the very first time? Well, I'll reiterate a point I made earlier, Kevin. These uh, Fermanagh boys are slow to get going, but when they do, they certainly yep. play a lovely, lovely brand of football. And it is a, a lovely brand of football to look at. Joe Kernan is going bananas down on the sideline because I think he's identified what we've been saying. There is no life to our man the last 20 minutes. Liam McBarron knocks it down. Edna O'Rourke. Good play by Paul McGrain going forward. Lays it back outside to Big John Toll. This one is hit to the left and wide. When I spoke to Joe Kernan, and I think it was last week actually, Kevin, he emphasised to me that he'd be a little bit apprehensive about Fermanagh on the basis that if they get a run in you and they get their momentum going, it's very hard to catch them because yeah. they hold no fears. Yeah, well, as you mean, <laughs> they're all kids, very oh. innocent, they play with great abandon and they are free. Oh, look at oh here. great ball. Paul Herty has to come off his line. Good goalkeeper. And the long ball is working every single time for Fermanagh. Here's Paddy McKeever, Kieran McGeaney lends support. Long ball inside, this time from an Armagh perspective, is aimed at Dermot Marsden. Marsden. Well, that's not what you call a Dermot Marsden special. He scored a point in the opening uh, ten minutes, but uh, that one will be a disappointment to and can I just make one other point, Marty, as well? Armagh, you know, they're notorious for preparing in fine detail for everything that's going to that come up against. I think one thing they haven't prepared as much as is meeting referee like John Bannon, who's refereeing this one very much by rule. Oh, a lovely catch by Marty McGrath. Lays it off to Raymond Johnson. This is, by the way, from Manor. The no-hopers, they said, coming to Croke Park. So far, they're producing it here. Lovely ball again. In towards Mark Little. He needs the support of his colleague from the half-forward line, Stephen Maguire, with the left post. Ah, oh, magic! It's his first from play. There's nobody in Listener Ski. 
There's nobody in left and for Manor. They must all be in Croke Park. And so far, when you look at it from our camera over in the Cusick uh, stand, for Manor are playing with great confidence. And that's the point of the game there by Steve Maguire. A lovely dish by the number 12, Mark Little, after a lovely knockdown from a lovely long foot pass. A lovely, simple score. Ball inside. This time, Colin Bradley was fouling. Referee spotting the foul. And the free was quickly taken, but didn't quite avail of it for Mana. Tony McEntee spreading the ball over to this side. Ah, oh, great tackle again by Niall Bogue. And you just feel, the point you were making, Kevin, is a valid one. You just feel that Armagh haven't actually cranked up the engine. Well, like, you, you look at that ball that's coming across to Cairn Hughes. Cairn Hughes is the winner for that ball. There's no question about that. What is Neil, Neil Bogue doing getting a hand to that? He's getting a hand to it because he has a lot of desire to get a hand to it. And the Armagh defender didn't commit himself to winning that ball quickly. Marty McGrath is the uh, player down injured again. Has been uh, scoring well. Two points against uh, Tyrone in the Ulster match. And two points against Donegal the last day. And uh, certainly here in Croke Park, when I was above in Listen to Ski a couple of weeks ago, the place was just covered in green and white. Charlie McGrew has certainly brought wonderful confidence to this Fermanagh side. They love their football in Fermanagh. They've been the only county in Ulster uh, that don't have a provincial title, and they have been dreaming about uh, building a team, trying to create uh, and establish a side that could take on the best. And here they are in Croke Park. And maybe that run that they had that uh, all the uh, critics were saying, well, Meath were on the way down, Corker building. Well, maybe they just might take up and sit up and take notice now. So far, it's early days. But so far, you'd have to say, Fermanagh are really putting it up to the Ulster champions. Look at this for combination play. Four or five passes. Taking it away is Raymond Johnson. Now, where is the marking on this man? It's Eamon Maguire. His father is a selector, Sean, from St. Patrick's in Duna in County from Mana. It's a terrible ball. Fancy value left it behind him. A chance for Stephen Maguire. Oh, dear. He should have done better. He really should have done better. Oh, and he'll, Stephen will know this because there's a double tap on a play like this. You know, you have a guy like Francie Bellew coming out, he leaves it behind him. That's a big call. And then, you know, miss it like that. Terrible, terrible uh, wide. And Armagh make a substitution. Coming on is Brian Mallon. It looks like John Toll is the player that's making way. And uh, Brian Mallon is a player that they think highly of from Tiernan Old Club in Porter Down. First year on the panel. Scored two points against Cavan when he was introduced as a substitute. Here come from Anna again. Tom Brewster. Overcarried. Three out to Armagh. They've got to keep that ball moving. That's the last thing they can do is bring it into the tackle. We've talked about this all season against a side like Fermanagh or Tyrone. You cannot bring that ball into traffic because they're going to gobble you. Great defending by Raymond Johnson. McBarron laying it off to Tom Brewster, using the long ball. It's coming here again. Oh, great rob by Andy Mallon. Good defending by the cornerback. Kieran McGinney, as always, makes himself available. Paddy McKeever. Kieran Hughes, Aidan O'Rourke, giving it long over to Stephen McDonald, but the ball carries too much power, and not even Stephen McDonald on a motorbike could reach that one. So it's going to be a free for a side of the ball, rather, for, for Manor. You know, as Crow Park fills up, Marty, you, you just look around, you a huge crowd for Fermanagh have made the trip here to Crow Park. They have a great sense of belief in this young team, and so far, I know I didn't give them much of a chance, but I have to eat my words, they're really putting it up to them. Paul McGrain, Stephen McDonald, Martin McGrath is injured for Fermanagh at the moment, and look at that, terrible passing by McDonald. I haven't seen him do that in a long, long time, if ever. This is Liam McBarron. Francie Bellew reading the situation well, lays it off to the big number eight, Philip Lockwood. Andy Mallon, back to Francie Bellew. Martin McGrath still getting attention just off camera at the moment as Armagh go into the attack. Chasing after this is Brian Mallet. Trying to get inside the cover of Shane McDermott. Back outside towards Ronan Clark. 
ball half blocked down. Chance here for Damon Marsden. Oh, off the post. Oh, my word. What a beautiful flick by Marsden. And Niall Tinney was left stranded. Coming back off the crossbar after 33 minutes of play. It's a let off for Fermanagh. Can they respond? Stephen Maguire. Options available to him. Goes for the crossfield ball over towards Mark Little. From Lisnaski. Willing to take on Andy Mallon. There you go again, Marty. Jersey pulling. Uh, I was going to say to you about a, about a minute ago about the you know the importance of not conceding a goal as we come up to half time and then we see Jared Marsden slip in the chance that you were just describing. Fantastic flick. Oh. But uh, maybe they're looking in today, Marty hit the crossbar, came back into play. It really was a wonderful sequence of play. As we look at uh, Mark Little being fouled here by Andy Mallon, and they have Jersey pulling, and John Bannon is absolutely correct. And it's about time, as you said earlier, Kevin, that uh, somebody actually took on the responsibility and be been a little bit more meticulous. Oh, it's a point a lot of people have made to me uh, over the last few months, indeed the last season or two, is that uh, a lot of this tackling and blanket defence is made up of people pulling you in quickly by the jersey, letting go so they have you in close so they can put heat on the ball. And, uh, well, look at the pictures yourself. Here's a chance for Fermana. That ball just swinging across the face of the goal. It was a difficult angle for Tom Brewster. Third wide of the half for Fermana. Paul Hirti. Second championship season, first choice. Formerly deputy to Benny Tierney. Yet to concede a goal in the championship. This is, uh, yeah, is the goal again. Oh, that is a great flick, Marty. See that there? That's really fast ticket. Oh, it's only inches. It's so unlucky. And as I said to you, maybe that's the sort of thing that oh. Fermanagh need. Fantastic catch by Marty McGrath. And he has injury problems. Tom Brewster. Fancy Bellio. There's a man inside, but Jarma have it uh, well covered through Ender McNulty. Down towards Tony McEntee. Three minutes of additional time in the first half to be added on, as you can see. Top of your screen. As for Mana. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh, he's in and trouble. There was a clear punch on Marty McGrath, and no question whatsoever that the Armagh player here connected. Marty is making every effort to get up, in all fairness to him, but it looked a high one. It and looks very, like Ender McNulty, is it? The referee is, it is Ender yeah. McNulty. Referee was just blocking his view. Oh, and he's giving him a red card. Armagh are down to 14 players. Oh, we'll have to have a look at this on Marty. He pops it. You see it coming down. There's Marty popping it. Oh, oh yeah, he's absolutely. absolutely gone. Had to be, had to be sent off. End of McNulty was very, very silly. And the referee, John Bannon, yeah. totally correct. Well, I make the point. In all fairness, Marty McGrath made a couple of attempts to get up and not make a meal of it. You can see he's been taken off on the Cusick side now for attention. Um, that was a high, a, rec a very silly tackle by End of McNulty. Had to go. No need whatsoever for it played in a very sporting encounter. But, and I don't want to be dwelling too much on the referee because they have bad days. But to be fair to John Bannon, he has been the epitome of consistency because some referees might have just given yellow. But he has been very, very strict in this game. Well, to, for me, uh, Marty, you know, I'm a, as I, say, I, I look at the rules and I look at the, the, the games the season go by. For me, now, that, this is an absolutely excellent display of referee. Now, can Fermanagh capitalise on numerical advantage? Even when it was even Stevens, uh, they were putting it up to our map. And at the moment, Fermanagh enjoy a two-point advantage. And I say Joe Kernan just can't wait to get these guys into the dressing room, Marty. Hugh Brady, by the way, is coming on as a blood substitute. So Huey Brady is on momentarily for Marty McGrath. He's still getting attention over the far side. Here's Tony McIntyre going forward, looking around, seeing if there are any options. Very few at the moment, it must be said. Where will Fermanagh play the extra man? Here's Ronan Clark. It looks like they're going to play him as an extra half back. Ronan Clark. And mm. Tempers becoming a little bit frayed here. Passions aroused. As Fermanagh, the Ulster champions, fully realise and appreciate 
this is going to be a match all the way to the wire. Well, let me just bring you up to speed with the spare man. It, it, it is Shane McDermott playing at centre back. Huey Brady, the blood substitute, goes into the Cusick stand dressing rooms as Marty McGrath continues to get medical attention. Joe Kernan, as Kevin was saying, will be glad to get his team into the dressing room because while they really ignited in the first five or ten minutes, Fermana, who are notorious slow settlers, have come back into this match. And amazingly, Fermana, the no-hopers, the outsiders completely, are leading at half-time. Fermana, eight points. Armagh, six points. Let's get on to the sideline for some half-time reaction. Join our sideline reporter today. Jim Carney. Yes, thank you, Marty. We're joined by Sean Maguire from Anna Selector and Benny Tierney, who is in the Armagh camp. Sean Maguire, this will be a happy uh, from Anna dressing room at halftime, surely? Well, it's only halfway through. I suppose we would have to say after the bad start we had, we're happy with the second half of that first half. We were lucky we didn't give away a goal there. But there's one thing I will say, like, we came here to win this match. I make no doubt about it. If we don't win it, it won't be for the one to try in, and I think them players out there have shown that so far in this game. Fair enough. Okay, thanks for taking out to talk to us, Sean. Best luck in the second half. You, Benny, it will be a much less happy dressing room, the Armagh dressing room. You have a lot of things to be worried about. We started off very well, but unfortunately, the last 20 minutes for Man have bossed it. They've bossed it all over the field, and unless there's rapid changes within our camp, we're going to be beaten here today. But uh, we're well renowned as a fighting team and a battling team, and much has been said about this team, and I, I just hope to use those battling qualities in the second half. But you're down a man. We're down a man, but sometimes that can work for you, you know what I mean? So maybe they'll take the foot off the pedal a wee bit, hopefully in the second half, because they really are steamrolling us at the minute. Indeed, it's interesting, as the lads were saying there at half-time, that uh, Armagh came out first. They even had a pep talk uh, as normal with Kieran McGinney. He brings them out to the dressing room, stops along the uh, corridor as, uh, and has a final few words. Andrew McCann, who normally plays left half-back, has been introduced uh, at half-time by Joe Kernan, now plays his club football in Leakslip. And he's coming on at corner back. And uh, we'll tell you in a moment who exactly has gone off. It looks like uh, the player that's gone off is Brian Mallon. So they're, they're adopting a defensive role uh, and taking off Brian Mallon. That's what we think. We'll confirm yeah. that uh, when we uh, see it for definite. And what's interesting there, Marty, is John Toll replaces Oshin McConville. Then we have Brian Mallon coming on for John Toll. And now we have Andy McCann coming on for Brian Mallon. So none of the substitutes have worked for our man. Sometimes you, you, know, you have groundhog days like this. They really need to wake up from uh, their lethargy from the first half and get cracking, or else this game is going to run away from them. Remember, though, our man of the breeze. Fermanagh playing from left to right. And judging by the flag down on the ground, Kevin, I think that wind has changed just slightly. Seems to be favouring for Mana. And uh, Armagh will try to upset these uh, challengers in the early stages now, as they did the first half. Stephen McDonald backfires eight. No rook. McDonald wants it, calling for it. Nobody running crossfield ball. He has to go short. Fires right half back, Kieran Hughes. Now they'll cross it to Kieran McGinney. Starting the process, far side, plenty of Fermanagh players. Remember, Fermanagh, in case you've just joined us, now with numerical advantage. There's a high challenge there by Sean Curry. And uh, the referee, again, is going to take yes. matters uh, uh, in control here. Yeah, this, that, this is a yellow card offence. Uh, no, no question about that. He uh, catches him uh, with his left arm and swings him around the neck. And uh, John Ballin's in control. He's just waiting for things to settle down. And I've no doubt that's going to be a yellow card. So John Bannon is uh, having a word there and giving a yellow card. As the referee, uh, obviously, there's a change in the uh, change of jerseys there. As the referee, uh, we'll tell you about that just in a moment. We'll confirm it. Paddy? Teddy. Yeah. It's in the, absolutely. Marty McGrath is number 31. As uh, change of jerseys in the blood substitution as Teddy McKeever drops this in. And well gathered by Barry Owens. Laying it off as Liam McBarron. From Manor going forward. Ball from Mark Little to run and to win. Oh, great defending by Andy Mallet. Back to the number 20 substitute, Andrew McCann. Now operating at right corner back. Laying it off as Paul McGrain. Dropping this in. 
two against two here. Barry Owens combining with Ryan McCluskey. This is Stephen McDonald. Looking for a little bit of support. It comes in the form of Paul McGrain, who loses possession. Good defending by Fermanagh. Marty McGrath. They're playing it very tight. They need to be a little bit more expansive. Nice pickup by Liam McBarron. Ronan Clark and Kieran McGinney between them. Win possession and win themselves a free. Well, that's just poor defending by Fermanagh. Bad hand passing in tight space. They turn the ball over. Kieran McGinney comes up with it. Just have a look for Kieran here when he bursts out. Watch the hand going, grabbing the Fermanagh hand and pulling it in with him. He's got away with it. It's an old trick and it seems to work occasionally as Paddy McKeever. He certainly went on a scoring spree against Donegal with a goal in three. This could be his first, and the white flag is raised. First point for Paddy McKeever comes from a free. Well, these are the small inches, Marty, that count in these big championship matches. They get a handy enough free, but Paddy McKeever is good enough to convert it. It takes another point off the deficit, and they're the small little things you have to keep scrapping for. Niall Tinney's kick out, straight down the middle. Breaking ball, picked up by Tony McEntee. Laying it off, first Paul McGray. This is good play, Paddy McKeever in space. Good opportunity here, flicks it inside first, McDonald, and McDonald sends it over the bar. Half a dozen points for Stephen McDonald. And Armagh level for the second time with Fermanagh after four minutes of play in lovely, the second half. Lovely ball by Hughes. Look at McKeever, he's thinking about the goal. Uh, the minute he gets it, though, McDonald knows exactly what he wants to do over the bar. This was McKeever giving it into McDonald. Three Fermanagh players around him. The Ulster champion's not going to go down without a major, major fight. It's important for Fermanagh to keep control and keep possession. Thus, the quick ball and quick kick out is a good option. Stephen Maguire now. With Kieran McGinney with him. McGinney wins it fairly. Lays it back. Whereas big Philip Lockwood. He was fouled, so it's going to be a free for Armagh. Kieran McGinney. Looking for the run. Stephen McDonald just took his eye off it momentarily. Ryan McCluskey comes away with it. Gives it down for as Eamon Maguire into the space, trying to lay it in front of Colin Bradley. Did well. They know what they're doing, these Fermanagh boys. Laying it back for Stephen Maguire. Into the corner, into the space. Tom Brewster. Difficult angle, very difficult. And was not the right option to take. Well, there's a, a man who's played a lot of football at midfield. I'll, that's the best I can do for him with an effort like that. With a left foot, playing at left corner forward. It's a very difficult execution if you're going to hit it with the uh, outside of the boost. Miscues it completely. Very, very poor wide. Oh, fine catch by Philip Lockett and Clady. The man a man down injured. You can see where uh, Marty McGrath has that bandage that uh, fooled us at the beginning of the second half. Yeah, what's happened here is Lee McBurn, watch the hand going back, he's just swinging to get oh. free, and there he gets it. He's an aggressive player, Philip Lochran, you can't put that down to anything sinister, Marty, does. he's trying to get out of the tackle, he is swinging a bit, but that comes with the cut and trust the championship. And Philip Lochran plays his club football with a junior club, Clady, just between Armagh and Newry. And, uh, he's a player, of course, uh, that uh, was injured in the warm-up on the Wednesday night before the Cavan game and uh, had a calf muscle problem. Uh, and certainly the player that he collided with there, Liam McBarron, is suffering a very nasty facial injury. Former Kinali player. Well, Liam, I've had a, Liam is in trouble here. I've had a chance, Marty, there to look at like the, the rest of you is in slow motion. And no, I still don't uh, change my opinion critically on it. It's, uh, you know, he's trying to break free the tackle. He's a tall guy, Philip Lochran. He's six foot plus. He's swinging to get free. And uh, he's made contact, but I don't think it was anything intentional. Let's see it here again. And I think it's a justifiable argument, uh, Kevin, but uh, Liam McBaron has gone off for attention. And on is Huey Brady. 
normally plays cornerback. And uh, was actually sent off in the match against Tyrone as Kieran McGinney hits this with conviction. It's a huge point, a huge point for McGinney, Marty. Absolutely huge point, an inspirational point for McGinney. You know, he's the captain, he's taking it on. He's on his wrong side, but he hits that a big wallop with, his, with the kid dog foot and it sails over the bar. How big a score is that going to be? Well, it's his first here in the uh, quarter-final. Kieran McGinney, ex Mullabon, now, of course, Nafina. Leading by example. For Mana, remember, playing with an extra player after Ender McNulty sent off in the first half. But like the first half, it is Armagh that have settled the quickest and certainly are putting it up to their challengers. Ball down towards fancy value, but unfortunately from an Armagh perspective, it was Andy Mallon that was fouling. So it's going to be a free end for Fermanagh. And you can hear the fans in the background, the Armagh fans especially, they are not happy with John Bannon's interpretation. And I have to say the reason is, Marty, they haven't come across this type of tight, consistent refereeing, perhaps. And again, I think Andy Mallon was fouling. Absolutely. So this is a chance here for Tom Brewster. From Enniskill and Gales. Scored a point against Cork, a point against Donegal. Yet to score here in Crook Park on quarter-final day. It's looking good. White flag up. It's his first point in this quarter-final. Level for the third time after nine minutes of the second half. And a critical free for Tom Brewster. Of course, he has the left foot that's going to favour that type of kicker from the right-hand side. But he hits a lovely ball, Marty. Lovely bit of curl, lovely height, and it swings just inside the near post. And we've levelled Pegan again. Paul Hearty aims for a big Philip Lockwood. Breaking ball picked up by Aidan O'Rourke. Available in the centre is Dermot Marsden. Has to go back to O'Rourke for support. Tended pass well read, but O'Rourke gets it back. Here's Dermot Marsden. Fouled as he was about to take the kick by Niall Bold. And that's going to be a free in for Armagh, just outside the Fermanagh 45. No question here. No question. So Stephen McDonald again from Kilivi going to take this. Score of six points. Four from play, two from freeze. I haven't seen him take them from this sort of distance before. This could be right on his range now. I just haven't seen him taking them from 45, 50 metres out. Didn't quite connect properly. Another foul. This time on Ronan Clark by Barry Owens. Barry Owens is disappointed with himself more than anything else. And it gives Armagh a relatively easy free just to the left of the post. Look how silly this is. Look, he's not going to get that ball. He has no chance of getting that ball. And he just jumps across him. He's picked up a yellow as well. Personal foul by Barry Owens. And as you say, rather silly. They need to keep their composure. Well, it's all fine being, you know, aggressive, uh, going for the ball, Marty, and giving it everything you have. But there comes a moment in the defender's life when he says, I ain't going to get this one. I'll stay on my feet and I'll cover off. Stephen McDonald going for his seventh point. It's a simple tap over. So now for Stephen McDonald, it's seven points, four from play and three from pricks. Yeah, he's, he's, so, he's some player, Marty. I mean, he's just loving these over for fun. Play are from freeze. He's absolutely super. And again from Anna, wisely, I feel. Bill from the back. McDermott, fortunate to get away with that. Niall Bow gathers. Ryan McCluskey. It's a poor pass. And the ball still in play, surprisingly. Going back to gather is Kieran Hughes. Under a little bit of pressure from Colin Bradley. Tony McEntee. You have to say at the moment it's Armagh that look like they have numerical advantage. Stephen McDonald laying it inside to Roman Clark. Clark wins the tussle for possession. This he brought down inside the large rectangle. There's really ridiculous stuff and the referee still I don't think has blown his whistle. I think he's going to hop it on the 20 metre you'll find. 
Well, I question whether or not Ronan Clark was fouled here inside the large rectangle, Kevin. We'll have a look at it, Marty. I, I don't think so. Barry Owen's doing a good job. He's holding his hand a wee bit. No, nah, there's no foul there. No, no question. If anything, it might have been taken off the ground, but yeah, he's going to hop it on the 20. That's a good call. It is a good call. Well, Gavard laying it off, but intercepted superbly by Shane McDermott. Armagh chasing in numbers, despite being down a player. Now for Mana. After 12 minutes of play in the second half, it's normally around now they begin to sparkle. Colin Bradley unable to keep it in. Sideline ball, Armagh. Just the inside pass, Marty, was too high, it's hanging too long, and that favours the strong physical defender, and he did very, very well, Mallon. Paul McGray giving it back for as uh, Andrew McCann. Ignore. It's here, really, that Fermanagh have to put the pressure on Armagh, getting a boot to it. As Andrew uh, was uh, rather Peter Sherry. This is Philip Lockwood. Plenty of players there for Fermanagh. And they start again. Huey Brady into the space. Now they've got to capitalise. Running. Eamon Maguire getting by one challenge. They descend on him in numbers, but Maguire gets the kick in and sends it over the bar. Well, Marty, Wonderful run Marty. by Eamon Maguire. I can tell you the Armagh defenders are uh, not happy with that. They, they saw that one as going wide. But this is the one-on-one -on -one that Armagh hate to see. OK, he takes him on beautifully, swings it over. I think it's young Maguire and uh, swings it over beautifully. Eamon Maguire, Armagh not happy with that. We might get a different angle of it again. That one won't tell us a lot just now. But uh, contentious score, no doubt about it. Contentious or not, they're level for the fourth time after 14 minutes in the second half. Ball sent in towards Stephen Maguire. Francie Bellio. Fouling, perhaps. Referee says play on. Colin Bradley is working over there on the far side. Difficult enough angle, and it's well wide. Terrible waste of possession. Yeah. It's Fermanagh's fifth wide of the game. They're second in the second half. And we wonder if this was really a point by Eamon Maguire. Let's see. As we look at uh, the far angle, this is the shot. And I would say so, I have to say. Yeah, just yeah, about, just about. Yeah. yeah, we'll give that one. Picked up by Paul McGrain. Pumping it in. Gathering it with Ryan McCluskey. Played a bit of football. Here we go again. Here we go again. It's after the dish, do you see? The late bent is coming in. We have been to see it here. This is it again, Stephen McDonald coming in. Oh, oh geez. And Stephen McDonald should be sent off, no question. But I don't think he's going to spot it. I'd say it's a yellow. It's a yellow yeah, it's card. A yellow, yeah. But that should have been a sending off by Stephen McDonald. There is no place at all in the game where there's a punch after the ball has been delivered. Yeah. The problem, Marty, we were looking at it as well. It looked like that old check that uh, Martin was talking about. But this is very, very cynical. Oh. That's very, very cynical. He's really lucky to be left on the field. He should be gone for an act like that. There's no question about it. I have sympathies with the referee because, you know, it looks like a check. We only picked it up on the slow-mo. But, uh, but, perhaps, but perhaps, though, Kevin, he should have consulted the linesman or the umpires who would have at least given him additional information. Yeah, that's a fair point. And uh, it's obvious as well by the Fermanagh player on the ground. I didn't pick up his number, Marty, who it was. Uh, it's actually Ryan number McCluskey. four, uh, Ryan yeah. McCluskey. You know, it's obvious that he's got a fair bet. He hasn't just been checked after the ball. He's not down there for no. fun. And Ryan McCluskey down on the ground as Joe Kernan ponders, wonders. Can he get out of this one alive? Ryan McCluskey played a bit of football across channel with Carlisle at a time when Roddy Collins, one of the uh, great characters of the game of football, here it is again. McCluskey first to the ball. Now watch McDonnell oh, punch yeah. into the face. No question. You could see Roddy coming out of his box if uh, he was manager <laughs> of Ryan at this stage of it. <laughs> the Rod squad would be after uh, McDonald. There's no question about that. Now, let's see what Fermanagh can do now. Eamon McGuire yeah. gets the break. They're beginning to work, 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 work. A little bit harder. And like the first half, Armagh can at them all guns blazing. Stephen Maguire with Francie Bellier lays it off to James Sherry. Brian Mark Little. 
Good work again by Armagh this time. Andrew McCann gets the benefit of the doubt, wins himself for free. And that's going to be a chance for Armagh to reorganise. Tony McEntee. Referee finally gives the free to Tony. Marsden is gone. Marsden wants it quickly, as you say, Kevin. Goes into the space. Easily gathered by Barry Owens. The long ball is used down towards Mark Little. Not Mark Little from prime time, Mark Little from Fermanagh. <laughs> Giving it inside by Shane McDermott. Going into the space. Getting by one defender. The captain of Fermanagh going for the score. Cuts it and sends it wide. Oh, that's atrocious wide. It was an opportunity for Fermanagh. Oh, Marty, that's a great opportunity with the, you know, the team stuck on 10 points each. A marvellous opportunity, could have fisted it over or just curled it over, didn't do it. Here's uh, some information for you, 51% for Fermanagh. They have a 2% gain at the moment in terms of possession. Armagh with 49. Shane McDermott is the player that's down injured for Fermanagh. But they're thinking about introducing uh, in the Armagh camp Kevin McIlvana from Madden. It's a junior club. Played against uh, Antrim last year and did very well. And came on as a substitute against Cavan and scored a great point. And the player that's coming off is Aidan O'Rourke. Marty, just an interesting observation perhaps. Uh, when you have a look at the, uh, all the medical attention, and this is not a reflection, uh, we have seen two cynical pieces of base, no question about that. This isn't a reflection on, on Amara at all. I suppose it's, it's more a compliment to their physical power, all the medical attention has been on the Fermanagh side. Uh, they've been uh, taking big hits and uh, maybe not used to the sort of intensity Armagh bring to it, but he's up and going again. So Shane McDermott from the St. Patrick's Club in Dunna. That's between Tom Butler and Lisna Ski. Scored a great point against Donegal. Captain, 26 years of age, as Paul Hearty takes the kick out. Paul McGrain easily gathers, laying it off far as Kieran McGinney. McGrain, look at the support by McGrain, just to the right. Kieran McGinney hits it, and it goes in for Ismail Tinney, just a few centimetres short. And from Mana, regroup. Shane McDermott recovered from an injury moments ago. Goes forward, lays it off for Ismail Bold from Kinali. Made his uh, name during the National Football League. Down for us, Colin Bradley. 24-year-old student journalist playing a corner forward. Great block down. Fermanagh have it once more. They need to hold possession. Cutting it across is Eamon Maguire. Far as Marty McGrath. Nice little sidestep. Able to score from here, but it's tailing off his boot. And well, well wide. They need to continue to open it up if they're going to have any chance for Manor. Well, you see, Fermanagh have the extra man, and all they have to do is keep flashing the ball around. Substitute coming on the Armagh team, Oshin McConville, despite the hamstring problem, has been called in. There's a bit of an emergency down on Armagh, and hamstring or no hamstring, they have to try and make an impact. It looks like Tony McEntee is the player who's going to make way. It's Paddy McKeever, in fact. McKeever, yeah. Paddy McKeever that's coming on or off, and Oshin McConville is on. And that's our Ma's fourth substitute. And that gives you uh, an idea the extent to the gravity of the situation for our man. Well won by Philip Lockwood. Free for our man. Here, McGinney. The run by McDonald is over towards the Cusick stand, but he uses Ronan Clark. Punched on by Barry Owens. Picked up by Niall Bold. In towards the centre, where Stephen Maguire is available. Here, McGinney, three Armagh players around him. And I have to say, unless that was a clenched fist, it's probably the only decision I'd ever disagreed with John Bannon. Yeah. And for descent, there's an extra 13 metres. They're not happy. Joe Curran isn't happy. Joe came onto the field there to remonstrate with John Bannon. I have to agree with you, Marty. That was a very, very handy one. This is Tom Brewster. Just took his eye off it just slightly. And Armagh regained possession in a game that was supposed to be a curtain raiser to the main event. This looks like the, the main course at the moment, as we await later on, Mayo and Tyrone. This is Ryan McCluskey laying it off. As for Manor, 
comes to grip with that extra man. They're playing him as around the half-back line. Maybe it's time to change that tactic and move him up front. As from Mana, try to hold possession. This is more like from Mana. Good play. Stephen Maguire and James Sherry. It's Sherry that's at the end of the move. Available this side is Bradley. Sherry steadies himself and sends it well wide. That is eight wides for Fermanagh, and that's their fifth in the second half. Yeah, they're making no attempt to work the ball inside. They could be doing better. And Fermanagh introduced Dara McGrath from Ern Gales, and that's uh, in the Belique area of Fermanagh. He came on against Meath and scored a point, and came on against Donegal as well. And uh, he's coming on at full forward instead of James Sherry. From Manor, have it once more. Nile Bow losing possession thanks to the good work by Ushin McConville. This is McConville going forward into the space. From Manor, not intimidated by reputations. Inside for his McDonald. Back outside again. Available if he needs him, and he does. Is Kevin McIlvana, and that's an easy ball for Niall Tinney. 12 minutes left, and referee John Bannon has called for the ball, and I think he's going to give a 45. Yeah, yes, I'd... the umpire has given a 45, or rather has signaled that it should be a 45. Yeah, you'll see McIlvana if we get another look at it there that uh, there is a bit of contact on his kick. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to, re you'd have to review his shot and say, God, that was a shocking shot. Well, it's a shocking shot because someone got a hand and took the sting out of it. Well spotted. Stephen McDonald. With the 45. Against the wind. This one is curling to the left, and this time it's definitely wide. Fourth wide, the first wide of the second half, actually, for Armagh. This is the incident again, as we see it, as Michael Vanna. Just uh, hard to judge from that, but we yeah, are fairly yeah. confident that I it did take a deflection. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. Niall Tinney. Oh. Breaking ball, picked up by Tony McEntee. Laying it out for Stephen McDonald. In towards Ronan Clark. Not getting it the first or second time. Sideline ball to Fermanagh. Well, his first touch and a second touch and nearly his third touch let him down. This didn't happen. Ooh! Challenge and Tom Brewster and Tony McEntee. Taking his eye off the ball there was Peter Sherry. Chance here for Ushin Makombo. <laughs> Early on, five minutes, and he puts Armand in front. The last time Armand scored was 11 minutes into the second half. And it took Ushin McConville from Cross McGlen Rangers to come on and show just exactly how to do it. On the run, Marty, with the outside of the foot, absolutely super point. Come at the hour, come at the man. Great score by Oshin. Super uh, skill to execute that sort of a play, play on the run. Brian Mallon on for Ronan Clark. Referee has blown his whistle. Given a free two for Mana. Nine minutes left in actual playing time. For Mana with numerical advantage after Inda McNulty was sent off in the first half. Now trailing by a point against the Ulster champions. Tom Brewster available inside. Decides to drop kick it and again it's signal wide. And perhaps maybe we should emphasize that this is a very young side and inexperience seems to be evident there. As we decide, uh, just to show you this, we're at the Republic of Ireland, you're 1515717181, the Bank of Ireland RT Man of the Match competition. If you're in Northern Ireland, it's 0901063017. And uh, if you uh, agree with our analysts who decide the Man of the Match, then you have won a prize here on the Saturday Game Live. And what a game this has produced. Going into the attack is Raymond Johnson. Had a previous existence as a wing forward. Giving it inside. There's a chance here for Fermanagh. 
Difficult angle, and the umpire say it's over the bar. Tom Brewster with his second point in this quarterfinal, his first from play. But this is what they should be doing, Marty. I said it earlier on. They should be working the ball inside. OK, the inexperience has cost them a bit. They're shooting from too far out. When they run at the defence, that's when they cause the bit of panic. Brewster does very well coming in on his uh, left side. Hooks it over the bar. It's a beauty. It's 11 points each. It's a level for the fifth time as well, Kevin, after 27 minutes of the second half. <laughs> Breaking ball picked up very snappily by Peter Sherry. Into the space. Colin Bradley on the turn, and it's just gone to the right and wide. Colin Bradley is claiming that there was a deflection of Andrew McCann. The umpires are having none of it. Joe Kernan making changes, looking for attention. They snapped at that one a small bit, Marty. Could have carried it on, maybe developed the play, looked for a handy foul. Snatched at it, I thought, a small bit. Very close, though. Paul McGrain just gets some attention from the uh, team doctor. As uh, Paul Fierty takes the kick out. Four wides to ten at the moment. As Arma through Ushin McConville sets up another Arma attack. Beautiful, beautiful interception by Gary Maguire. And from Anna have possession and the free. Marty, I don't think I've ever seen Armagh turn over the ball as often in a championship no. match in the last three, four years. From Mana, have to look at various options. This breaking ball. Andy Mallet working hard as Shane McDermott. Picking up the loose ball is Marty McGrath. Support play is all from Mana play and know-how. They have to keep supporting each other. Here is Mark Little laying it off to Stephen Maguire, and yet another shot goes wide. 11 wides for Fermanagh. They are kicking this one away. Oh, they'll kill themselves if uh, it doesn't turn out for them. They're simple chances. He's got to carry it in and swing them over the bar. Tony McEntee. Laying it off to Oshin McConville. Oshin going forward. Dermot Marsden available. Here's Marsden. Dropping ball, Niall Tinney does away with the hat and grabs that ball like he does with his club. Irvin's down at midfield. Now for Mana, six minutes left. Almost just five, in fact. Can they pull out the shock of the year? Stephen Maguire, Francie Bellio fouling, free. And again, Armagh protests with the Longford official. Well, it is a foul. I mean, he even could have given it for the first one. In fact, I think he was given a bit of advantage. And then when Francie came in to finish it off, had to give the free. Mark Little is going well now again here. Here's Mark Little. Oh, oh. and the player was actually going down. He went down so low that the Armagh player collided with him. There was no uh, malicious intent here. I think both of them have come out the worst. You see the Armagh player just going down here and... Uh, the yeah, Armagh player just rolling over him. And Stephen Maguire just seemed to fall awkwardly as he was about to lay off the ball. Be interesting, Marty, just to see what decision John Bannon is going to give, though. Uh, it has to be a hot ball by rule. Stephen <laughs> Maguire here. You see he slipped, and that's what yeah, caused all the problems. He, he still has to hop it, Marty. That's the, that's the question. Now, is he going to give the free to Fermanagh, or is he going to stay with the rule and hop it? This will be a big call for John. Well, there you go. Excellent call. Did you digest the, the rule book before you came to court back today? <laughs> I'm expecting you to say paragraph 5, chapter 4. Here's John Bannon with this hot ball. Throw ball, I think, is what it's uh, officially called in the rule book. Correct. Martin McGrath trying to go up with uh, Big Paul McGrain. The man of boot seems to touch it the last time, and that's going to be a sideline ball for Amar. Tony McEntee, Paul McGrain, laying it off to Kevin McIlvana, Oshin McConville. Going back, however, to try and help out his defence there was Peter Sherry. And for Manor have it once more. Niall Bogue to Raymond Johnson. Back to Bogue. Stepped out over the line, line ball for Armagh.
Charlie Mulgrew getting in, trying to organise his defence, not to concede a score at this late stage. Two and a half minutes left in Krug Park in this first quarter final. Ashim McConville sliced off his boot badly. Should be a defender's ball. Fermanagh had it momentarily. Here's Paul McGrain laying it off to Stephen McDonald. Left or right foot, two Fermanagh players. Mark Little is back there, trying to put his body where the ball is. And here comes Fermanagh, not for very long. Cut out this time by Kieran Hughes. It's a great tussle in Krug Park between uh -huh. these two great Ulster counties. They're battling. They realise that victory is within their grasp. Both teams. And John Bannon again blows the whistle, and I'm sure it's going to be a throw ball. John Bannon throwing in the ball. Grabbed by Darren McGuire, and it's a free for Pramana. Well, it recalls now, requires now leadership, a bit of character and lots of confidence. Colin Bradley along the sideline. Linesman on the far side has raised his flag. He claims that Bradley had stepped out over the line with the ball, and that's going to be a sideline ball for Armagh. And as you can see, Bradley is incensed. Let's just see here. He's definitely outside. The hole of the ball has to be there as well. And Armagh regained possession. A minute and 20 seconds, roughly. Tim McMaster stopped this time by Peter Sherry. Is there a winner? In Fermanagh, here's Mark Little going forward, stepping inside one challenge, taking it on the run, hitting it and sending it wide yet again. Twelve wides, a dozen wides for Fermanagh. Less than a minute left in Croke Park in actual playing time. End of McNulty. Cannot believe what has happened to him today, but when he sees the pictures, I think he'll agree that the referee was correct. Joe Kernan will be very happy to come out of Crow Park alive, considering that numerically he's down, but it's for Manor that have the ball and Marty McGrath. What a wonderful performance by, by for Manor. Credit, they're playing the team that were bidding for their fifth All-Ireland semi-final in six years. Four minutes of additional time in this game. And Chris, Marty, they have to work something in short. They're getting all the pads right from They have to be cute about this, work something in short and see what they can get off it. Tom Brewster. Pumping this in high, dropping in. There's a touch to it, and it's gone out over the... The umpire says no. The hole of the ball, that's what he was indicating. And Armagh, can they counter-attack now? As all of Croke Park kind of take their eye off this wonderful arena and this pitch. Can the Ulster champions qualify for the All-Ireland football semi-final? This is McDonnell chasing away. Behind him is Ryan McCluskey. So is Barry Owens. McDonnell, like a ballet dancer, takes too many steps, and it's a free for Fermanagh. 70 minutes played, we're into injury time, sides level, 11 each. Shane McDermott, brought to ground, releases it, but the free is two for Mana. Can you bear to watch? Can you bear to look away? For Mana and Charlie Mulgrew on the verge of history. For Mana have never qualified for an All-Ireland football semi-final. If they win this, it'll be the longest journey in the championship in their history. But can Armagh, the kingpins of Ulster, hold on and perhaps sneak a victory here? The ball is down to Kieran Hughes. Getting there ahead of his direct opponent. Hughes laying it off towards Paul McGrain and Philip Lockman over their far side. Here come Armagh. Laying it off is Tony McEntee to Ushin McConville. Armagh, the more experienced, going forward like a ray of Armagh footballers. There's a chance here and a chance to score the winner, and the ball is well wide. Oh, he had lots of options outside, lots of options, and didn't do it. Ryan McCluskey receiving a quick kick out. Huey Brady to Raymond Johnson. 72 minutes almost coming up. The ball is into the space. Eamon Maguire chases after it. Can't reach it. Line ball to Armagh. Oh, two minutes to go. Is there a winner in it? Joe Kerner looking on. From Mana. Try to keep Armagh down this side of the field. Francie Bellion. Credit Armagh. 
with 14 men after uh, Inder McDulty was sent off have really done well in this second half. Stephen McDonald perhaps now satisfied that this will go to a replay and the pass from McDonald is terrible. Now, have they got it in them? Mark Little, away he goes. Giving it low down for Stephen Maguire. Back to Mark Little, they have to hold possession. Laying it off to Frenchy Bellew. Stephen Maguire and Bellew intercepts. They're just afraid to win this for Manor. They just can't seem to create the space and the opportunity to score a winner. Usher McConville lays it off to Tony McEntee. McConville goes for the return. But for Manor, regain possession. Raymond Johnson. Referee not blowing his whistle. Armagh have it once more. Tony McEntee into the space. One minute left. Nile Bogue. Heartbreaking stuff. Heart stopping stuff. It's wonderful football in Crook Park. History going to be made if these boys in green and white can produce a winner. McDermott to Johnson. There's the chance. This is the opportunity. He's hitting it. He's sending it. Oh, my it's God. Oh, oh, my God. Boy. What a winner from Manor. Tom Brewster. They cannot believe it. Are the Ulster champions one of the hottest of favourites for the All Ireland? Are they about to exit the championship? 73 and a half minutes played, and from Manor have it once more. Dreams do become reality, but they've got to hold on. Mark Little will play for time. We're heading towards 73 minutes 48 seconds. Kicks it in long. Chasing after this is Andy Mallet, giving it back to Francie Bellew, laying it off. Have Armagh got time to score an equaliser? One second left. It's One up. second. It's up the Armagh are out of the championship. Fermanagh have produced the shock of the year. Can you believe it? Dreams do become realities. <laughs> there was nobody in Fermanagh. Long time ago, there was a political comment called Gubu. It's great, it's unbelievable, it's bizarre, and it's unprecedented. Oh, my word, Martin, I've never seen anything like it. Can you believe the sea here in Croke Park is just unbelievable? They came here, no hopers, everybody, analysts, experts, journalists, they all said goodbye from Anna, thanks very much. Instead of that, it's goodbye Armagh. The hottest of favourites, the Ulster champions, have been knocked out of the championship at a quarter-final stage by, yes, believe it or not, little known from Manor. They love their football in from Manor, and nobody will deny them this, but they are from Timor, Enniskillen, or Newton Butler. There's the scoreboard, from Manor 12 points, Armagh 11. Well... The next game is due to start in 10 minutes' time here at Croke Park, but I can guarantee you now there's no chance of Mayo and Tyrone starting at a quarter to four. Uh, this is a famous uh, day for Fermanagh, there's no doubt about that. It's absolutely fantastic. Armagh, one of the hottest favourites to the championship this year, and after winning Ulster in such impressive style, then there was absolutely no doubt at all about it that they were expected to go all the way. But what a day for Fermanagh, what a day for Tom Brewster. Surely his point will make him a famous man in Fermanagh. The man of the match, surely Tom Brewster. Let's go down to the sideline. Great. Go, Jim. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, welcome to our quiet dressing room here on the far side of Croke Park, much quieter than it is right out there on the field. And Niall Bogue has come in to talk to us here. And we're just giving Niall an extra few seconds here to get his breath back because he is uh, physically drained and uh, it's an emotional moment for him too because he knows the significance of this result. He knows what his team has done. Uh, Niall, I know that you're hardly able to talk, uh, but we have a very special duty to perform here in a minute and you've been very good to come in and talk to us. Niall, we congratulate you personally and the team. You played your heart out and you just have enough maybe to talk to us and tell us what it means to you. I'm still in shock to tell you the truth. I mean, it's hard to take in. It's just as soon as the final whistle went, I was sort of dragged in here. But oh, it's amazing. Can't believe it. I didn't actually realise, you know, what the story was till the whistle went. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, it'll take a couple of minutes for it to sink in. But, you know, we haven't won anything yet, though, you know, so another day. But you've had a big, big day here now. You've had good days last year. You've had great days this year. You're picking them off one by one. This undoubtedly was the biggest yet. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. I mean, we, we weren't given a, a chance coming into it. I think the odds were something crazy for our man. But uh, everybody within, we sort of said we built a wall around the squad and everybody within the squad, you know, fully believed that we were capable of, you know. 
Yeah, well, there's a wonderful atmosphere building up there outside in that corridor, Niall. We'll let you back to it in a moment, but it's our great pleasure uh, now to tell you that you are the RTE Sport uh, Man of the Match, and the award will now be made by Mr Jervis Strain, who is a senior uh, Bank of Ireland manager in Armagh, and I know that Jervis, though wearing Armagh colours maybe uh, in his heart, is very happy to present you now with this award. Congratulations. Thanks very much.